Good afternoon, guys. So um, it's been about a year since I've made a video for you guys, and today I want to do a video uh, using your Cricut and a product called Duralar. Duralar is just a polyester film. This is the matte, and this is the clear sheets. And you can use either one; it doesn't really matter. I'm going to show you the difference, though. Um, I started out using the clear. I watched a video by a lady, and I'll find that video. Um, I watched a video by a lady about a year ago, and she used the Duralar clear, and it creates a stencil. Um, now these stencils are reusable, and I love them. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not without this background sheet. Um, but it creates a stencil, and you can really barely see it, which... Um, I set these down when I'm working and then I lose them after I clean them up and they look clear again. So um, I found this at Michael's um, in Bristol. And no, I take that back, Johnson City. The Michael's in Johnson City, Tennessee. Um, and it's the matte sheets. And let me show you a matte one. This is a stencil I made yesterday or the day before. Um, so you can see the difference. You can really see. And see, that's the problem because then you set it down and you lose it with the clear ones. Okay. So you can see the difference with barely any light catching this one, and you don't have to have any light to catch that one. So these are the stencils that I am. Um, Here's a simple circle one. So I'm going to show you how to use the Duralar film to make some stencils on your Cricut. So two things you need to know. Uh, Duralar is fairly expensive. Uh, the matte film is $15.99. You can use your Michaels coupon with it. So it brought it down to like 7 When I bought it, it was like 7 something. And then the film, the clear film is $15.99 or $17.99. One of them is $17.99, one is $15.99. You can use your Michaels coupons with it. So keep that in mind. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is because it is a polyester film, it will use your cutting blade up a little bit faster than just cutting paper. Um, but they come in 9 by 12 sheets, so I can get, depending on what size of stencil I make, I can get 4 or 5 out of the same sheet, and when I just want a quick one like last night I cut out this one because I just needed some funky little circles um, and I had a bit of leftover at the bottom and I just cut it off so I can stick it back on my mat and make a small stencil later on uh, so that's a, a quick tip for you guys I just bought some new blades this morning and they're installed in my machine so I'm gonna show you how I get stencils <clears throat> or stencil patterns anyway from uh, Pinterest actually and um, how to load those into design space clean them up uh, set them to your mat cut them out although I'm not going to actually show you my Cricut cutting because I don't want to remove that contraption over there at my little craft space um, to film that but I am going to show you my desktop and uh, show you all my steps and stuff like that so when I'm done uh, with the stencil cutting out I will show you how easy it is to use because I can actually go over there and use that camera then and um, hopefully you guys will get some great ideas on what to do how to do it and be able to start creating your own stencils I know for me buying stencils is oftentimes a which do I want more do I want this craft paint? Do I want this craft spray? Do I want this paper? Do, you know, or do I want this $9 stencil? So I have just chosen a cheaper route. Um, one of these stencils, I just dropped my stencil on the ground. One of these stencils will probably cost me about 50 cents to make and that's, you know, the Duralar, like I said, I paid $7.54, let's say. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, 
754 and, and like I said when you break it down there's 25 sheets in a package and then the cost of the cutting blade so you know I'm probably paying less than 50 cents a stencil which for me gives me a little bit more creative freedom to buy other things as well as create a stencil that I want versus a stencil that someone else has created and maybe it's not big enough or it's too small or that's the same thing not big enough and too small maybe it's not big enough or it's too big so I can adjust the size in design space and I'll show you how to do all of that stuff too so let's get started open up your Cricut design space this is the page you're going to come to it's going to show all of your projects as well as all of the featured projects that Cricut offers um, I do have a subscription a monthly subscription to Cricut Access so I can get all of these projects and use them if I find a design to make a stencil now since I have a new blade I could use any one of these here's the one that I showed you that was the clear let me just click on that for you um, and it shows you this is this um, the image that I used I cleaned it up and I turned it into a stencil for me to use so I'd have some little crackle bubble looking things cobblestone I guess is what they call it um, so let me click off of that but like I said you can use any of these if you find a design on there that you like and you'd like to make it into a stencil that would make a beautiful stencil for journaling as well um, but I did tell you I was gonna do this from Pinterest so let me show you what I did to find those now you can use um, JPEGs and upload them you can get SVG files and upload them all in Cricut Design Space so all I did was go to Google and you can see Pinterest free SG SVG files I hit enter and it's gonna bring up a whole bunch of these it doesn't really matter which one you click on everybody's gonna have a bunch of really neat ones let's click on this one And let it load for a second so there's going to be some really great files for you to choose from um, I tried to do this one last night but for some reason and it did come in a what are they called DXF file and for some reason it wouldn't load into my uh, Cricut so I've got to see why it wouldn't do that but anyway um, you really just want to find something that you want to create a stencil out of and I tend to look for more simple designs I'm not really one of those fussy people I don't I don't do a lot of fussy fussy cutting or anything like that I don't make cards but certainly if you make cards then definitely definitely do that now birds is one of my favorite places to go to Oh, let's go here. <clears throat> she does some really amazing cut files that you can get for free. Um, let's see. There was one on here yesterday that I really wanted to snatch up and print out. Oh, she's got Halloween ones love it okay now I don't know where I saw it from hang on maybe it was in backgrounds yep it was in backgrounds so she has them in bundles and you can get them you get four in a bundle um, the one that I wanted was this one right here because I really like this diamond cut and the crosses and then this chevron pattern I really enjoy that so dun, 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 dun. oh I don't know what I'm doing here okay so just unzip it 
and this is a PNG file. So what I have found is with my computer anyway, and I don't know if everybody's computer is this way, I have to save it somewhere, like to my desktop or whatever. So I just do that and we'll go back to Cricut Design Space. We want to create a new project and we want to upload that PNG file. And I could just drag it right off of my desktop, but right here. So here it is, and this is a moderately complex image because I'm going to have to pull all of these little things out. I want the detail to really show up there. So I chose moderately complex. I'm going to go to continue. And then all you want to do is just click out all these little elements that you don't want, where you want the cuts to be made, basically. So this is going to take a few minutes. I'll be back. Okay, so through the magic of film editing, we're all done with cleaning up our image and we're just going to click continue. It's going to bring up this dialog box. You can save as a print then cut image or you can save as just a cut image, which is what I want to do because I, I don't want to print it. I'm going to save this instead of background bundle 3, I'm going to save it as stencil, 4 pack, Various. Oh, various. Um, I'm going to save it. Now you can see it's right here. So I'm going to choose it and insert image. It's going to bring up my new screen, my new project. Now this whole thing is five, almost six inches by six inches. And that's great, but I want bigger stencils than two and a half by two and a half basically. Now remember my sheet is only nine by nine by twelve so I have to watch to make sure that I don't go over the eight and a half inch mark here when I pull this out. So that's going to give me um, my stencils are going to be around four inches by four inches which is a pretty good size um, I could probably I could probably use some sort of uh, editing software and cut these apart and then put them on here individually and make them bigger but this is actually a pretty good size for what I want to do so this is eight and a half by eight and a half and that means I'm going to have to use a whole sheet of my film. So I'm going to click make it. It's going to show it on my map. And I'm going to click continue. My machine's going to connect and I am going to get to cutting. Um, so let me show you where it, this is probably the most important part when it comes to this. So it's going to ask you to set your material. I've tried various material settings with the Duralar and um, many of them will work, but I found that I really do get a better um, overall cut if I use the magnetic sheet, 0.5, and then I set my pressure to more. Okay, so I have loaded my uh, Duralar sheet onto my blue mat, which is the less sticky one. It doesn't matter which mat that you use. 
Um, I have found that my stickier mat works better for small detailed things like what that uh, diamond cut one is, but my stickier mat actually doesn't have any sticky left on it, so I have to do that. So I'm going to load my mat into my machine. And it's going to tell me to press the flash and go button. So I'm going to do that and it's going to start cutting. And you can hear it in the background cutting. Doing its thing. Now what I like about this is that it's going to cut these into individual squares. So I'm not going to have to do any trimming with my paper cutter. So I'm going to switch back over to my regular view camera so I can peel these off in front of the camera for you guys. So here we are waiting for the cut to happen and you can hear it running over here. And I'm going to drink my Starbucks Frappuccino. Um, while this cuts though, so you guys don't get bored. I have a funny story to tell you today. This morning I ran out, like I said, and got new blades for my Cricut and um, on the way home and I, I live in the middle of nowhere. I live where uh, Southwest Virginia and Northeast Tennessee meet. So I moved from Scott County, Iowa where you go five minutes across the road and you're in Illinois and I moved to Scott County, Virginia and you go five minutes down the road and you're in Tennessee. So I I live in the middle of nowhere, but uh, when I was a kid growing up, my mom always said, if you're going to sing, always sing with the windows up when you're driving down the road, because otherwise a bug might fly in the window and fly down your throat and you'll choke to death. Now, I always thought that was hilarious as a kid. I didn't realize until I was a teenager and I tried to join choir that the reason why she told me that was because I just sing terrible and she didn't want anybody else to hear me. Um, but now I live in the middle of nowhere. The road out here has very little traffic on it. It's a two lane road. So I roll the windows down and I'm driving down the road singing my favorite country music. Lo and behold, what happens? A bug flies in the window, flies down my throat, and I nearly choked to death. So, it wasn't all. So, yeah. So, then, um, I get into what I call part of town. And um, I decided to stop at Priceless Foods. Now, for those of you who live in this area or are familiar with Priceless Foods, if you have them in your own area, um, you know that you pay basically wholesaler prices and then they charge it's like 10 or 15 percent um, on top of that. So um, you, you really get everything cheaper. So I have this little addiction. I have this bug in my throat that I'm dry swallowing and I need something really bad to drink. And I have this little addiction called Monster Energy Drinks uh, Loca Mocha. And for whatever reason, I don't know if Coke has a manufacturing problem or what's going on, but they haven't been in retail stores. They haven't been in my store. Um, and I work for a dollar store. They haven't been in my store for about two months and they're very difficult to find in other stores but you can generally always find them at Priceless and they may be a little out of date I don't know I don't check the dates but I've heard that that sometimes happens if you get them at Priceless so I swing in there thinking I'm gonna get a mocha loca and treat myself lo and behold no loca mochas so my second go-to of course is Dunkin Donuts mocha and they are normally $2.50 if I go to Kroger. So I walk down the aisle. <clears throat> I find them, the Dunkin' Donuts mochas, and they're cold. And they were $2.74. So no, that's not going to happen because I'm not going to pay $3 for one drink. So I go a little further down because I look over and I see Starbucks Frappuccinos. 
that's my third choice. That's number three. If I can't find it after that, I just don't need it. So I look at the price there, a buck fifty-eight. Shameless plug for Starbucks. I don't I don't typically drink their coffees anymore because it's too expensive. But I like these. Uh, my dollar store has them two for five. So two fifty a piece. Well these for a buck seventy-four. So I'm doing some quick math in my head while I'm choking on this bug. <clears throat> and I'm like, for the same price as I get them at my store, I can just get three. So I grabbed three of them. Drink half of one down trying to swallow this, but I don't know what kind of bug it was. Y'all, the bugs out here versus in Iowa where I'm from, the bugs out here are like bizarre. Okay, they have the normal bugs. <clears throat> My mosquitoes in, in Iowa are brown. The ones out here are black with white spots. Kind of freaked me out a little bit the first time I saw one. And the fact that they're like the size of your fist. Then you all got these tree bugs. And I don't, I've never actually seen one sitting in a tree, but that's just what all the locals keep telling me that they are as tree bugs. Um, that have like, triceratops looking crowns on their heads like prehistoric stuff and bodies that are this long and I'm this is not an exaggeration bodies like this long with legs that are like a pen you know coming off of them I will post a picture of this bug that I saw the other day on my porch <coughs> and my dog my dog will chase mice he goes after the pit bull down the road. He's a pug who's outside right now. He's a pug. He will go after the pit bull down the road. Saw this bag and started crying and hiding behind me. I ain't even kidding. I don't, what, what do you guys feed the bugs out here? I don't, I don't understand. What do you feed the bugs? Anyway, so long story short, after all that, because it was still a long story and it's not short, uh, I swallowed the bug. And I'm, I'm just hoping it wasn't like one of those poisonous tree frogs where you touch it and you die. I'm still here after two hours after all, but still, you know, I don't know. Y'all's bugs are serious out here. Okay, so now I'm completely traumatized by this whole bug story again. So, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to drink my Frappuccino and, um, I'll be back. Okay, so I have brought over to my crafting area my mat and everything is all cut out. So, I brought it over here to show you just because I think it'll be easier for me. So, all you do is lift up the Duralar from whatever angle you want to. I usually start with the side that I didn't cut. Um, you can see what's left over, and actually, that might make a, I don't know. Anyway, so that's what's left over. I'm going to set that off to the side. So here's my four stencils, and I typically just um, use a fingernail. You can use your scraper, which I have here. You can use um, a pair of tweezers, or your spatula that comes with your Cricut, any of those things will work just fine. Um, so here's the first one. You can see it cut beautifully and I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. And there might be a little spot that didn't stick to the mat that you'll have to poke out. Typically it's not too many of them. The cuts are good. So, um, you know, you might have to pull out little things that just get stuck in there. So that's the first one. This one is, I think, the chevron pattern one. Yeah. I call it chevron anyway. Um, like I said, my mat's not very sticky. Otherwise, these would have just clung to that mat. And it wouldn't have been a problem. I saw a video where you can re-sticky your mats. I think they cleaned it with Windex or something, or some kind of de-stickier stuff. I don't know. Um, 
And then they use some kind of spray on, tack, tack on or something like that. And I looked at that when I was at Michael's today, that tacky tack on or whatever it's called. And that stuff's 11 bucks. I mean, I imagine you can respray your mat 75 times with it. But um, I had craft supplies to buy, so I was not about spending $11 right then. Although I could have used my 40% off coupon because on Cricut stuff you can't use your coupon and I had a 50% off in my pocket that they can't, came in the mail and I used that to buy my dilution sprays at all. I'll show you today. So there's that one. You can see that they it, it just cuts beautifully on this Duralar. There's that one. Came free really well. And the final one is this one. I guess this is kind of a chevron pattern too. I think it's more of like bricklay, I guess. When I was first looking at it, <coughs> um, cleaning it up, for some reason I kept thinking houndstooth, but houndstooth has that jagged little edge in one, on one end, so I don't know. But there's that one. So then to clean your mat up, it's just super simple. You, I mean, it, typically you just use your scraper. I usually do this over the trash can to get all these little bits and pieces. Now when I did my... When I did my big circles one here, I actually peeled those off and I put them in a little uh, lid box up there. Let me adjust my camera because you guys are getting some weird stuff here. So um, I put those in a little box up there so that I can use them as a mask when I'm doing my jelly printing at some point. So here's the four stencils we just created right here. This took all of about total maybe 20 minutes between cleaning it up because that was a pain in the butt to clean up um, between cleaning it up on design space and then cutting it out about 20 minutes and then these are the stencils that um, these and these are the stencils that I created over the last couple of days and this is a mask I'm going to use this as a mask and it actually came out of when I created this stencil for Halloween. So, um, as you can see, I, I mean, literally probably have, if I had bought these individually at the craft store, about $30 worth of stencils, maybe 40 or more, <clears throat> depending on if they'd come in a pack or something, and I've probably spent less than $4 here, probably. So um, let me show you how beautifully these will stencil out. Now I'm going to use this one because um, I want to. Um, <coughs> sorry guys, I, my allergies are bad ever since that bug flew down my throat. I'm just not going to let go of that. Um, so I'm going to have this guy kind of coming off the side of the page here because I want him to be a little organic. Um, and if your page is curled up like this, when mine dried, it curled up like this, I just take it on the side of my desk or I kind of gently but firmly try to flatten it out a little bit. Um, anyway, I want this guy kind of hanging off the side of the page. I don't think I, well, maybe I do want that little branch there. But I definitely want him hanging off the side of the page. Okay, so I'm just going to lay my stencil down. And um, these are the sprays that I bought today with my 50% off coupon. They're $9.99 at Michael's, 50% off. I paid $4.50 or $4.89 or something like that for them. Um, so it's the, which one is this, white linen, and After Midnight came in a package. And then I have Pure Sunshine, London Blue, this one is Fresh Lime, and Postbox Red. 
Um, so now I have six sprays and I'm super excited about that. I have 11 of the Dilutions paints and last night I ordered um, the last 13 off of Blitzy and I will link that below. Uh, Blitzy is a great place to get them. I had some reward points from ordering other stuff on Blitzy and uh, so I got free shipping, $11.50 off my order and 13 paints and I spent less than $50. So, um, and free shipping. Woo. Who doesn't love free shipping? So, I'm going to use After Midnight. Um, actually, no, I'm going to use White Linen because I want this to be kind of ghostly affected. Is that even a thing? Um, <clears throat> so, if you've ever watched Diane, she'll tell you, especially with this white one, because the pigment goes to the bottom, don't shake it. Let me use my water bottle. Don't shake it. Kind of swirl it around and get it going because all that pigment sits at the bottom and um, it can gob up your sprayer. Anyway, so I'm going to use this white linen and I'll show you. I'm a messy, messy person. I don't even mind that overspray. It does look like I sprayed with uh, corrective ink though. What's that stuff called? I don't remember what that stuff is called. Look at that. Look at how pretty that is. I don't even mind all that overspray because I'm going to journal on it. Um, oh, that's the other thing that I bought. So still less than $50. I got those 13 paints coming in the mail. They should be here supposedly according to Blitzy. They'll be here on uh, Saturday. I ordered them last night so I don't really believe that that's going to happen by Saturday. Um, but I also got the black and white paint pens. So I'm excited about that. Now this feels chalky. I have never used this uh, white linen before, but it does feel chalky. And it cleans up. Just don't worry about my diamonds. Just don't tell my husband that I just sprayed all that with my wedding rings on. Um, but I always keep baby wipes on hand so I can clean up my messes. You can see I still have some green on there from when I actually did this page to begin with. Um, so yeah, the stencils work really great, and, um, let's see, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to clean up really quick while this dries, and I'm going to show you something else, um, because I did create a mask on accident, I mean, it's just one of those things that happens when you're cutting a stencil out. Ooh, shaky. Is that, you know, sometimes you'll create that mask. And that's fine too. Um, but, let me bring this back over here, just this one. So it created a mask when I cut that stencil out. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to match my mask up. To where I sprayed that white. And I probably could have done this first, but now I'm going to use this after midnight. And I'm just going to spray. I don't even mind that. All that splatter and stuff just adds some contrast and some interest. But watch this. Now that white that I sprayed earlier has really come up. Looks pretty good. And this is just a page that I was messing around with anyway. So if it did get screwed up and I didn't like it, I could paint over it. I wouldn't even bother me. So there you go. And I'll actually probably journal on this one because it's pretty. Anyway, that's how you create uh, the...
stencils in Design Space. That's my my version of using Duralar. And like I said, I will clean. I will uh, clean. I'm going to clean this up, but I will link to the bottom of this video the uh, lady whose original video I saw that gave me the idea to go ahead and do this, to buy the Duralar and mess around with it in Design Space. I'll link, uh, of course, Pinterest will be linked down there because that's where I found my SVG files. I'll link Bird's uh, website since you saw me get those off of there. And, um, of course, if you're using a Cricut, you already have Design Space, so I don't need to link that. But, um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope you guys join me for another one, hopefully sometime in the next few days as time allows as my brain allows and as creativity allows thank you so much for joining me today y'all have a great day